Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation entitled Three ways to obtain the audio susceptibility of a DC-DC converter by simulation. This is another video in this series dedicated to the obtaining of the different characteristics of a DC-DC converter. In previous videos, we have seen how to obtain the open loop frequency response of a DC-DC converter. We have seen also three ways to obtain the input impedance of a DC-DC converter and three ways to obtain the output impedance of a DC-DC converter. So today we are going to see how to obtain the audio susceptibility of a DC-DC converter by simulation. Then in this video we will see an introduction, we will review how to obtain the audio susceptibility by theoretical calculation, and then we will see, as usual, three ways to obtain this transfer function by simulation. The first way is using the actual circuit, then by using the average circuit, and finally by using the small signal circuit. First, let's see why it is important to know the audio susceptibility transfer function of a DC-DC converter. This transfer function can provide us with the information about how a um, perturbation that we can have at the input of our converter is going to be transferred to the output. So if we have here a DC voltage at the input of our converter and we have a perturbation like this superposed to the input voltage, then at the output we are going to have the DC voltage and a given perturbation superposed to it. The ratio between these two perturbations is what we call the audio susceptibility transfer function. A typical situation is like shown here. We can have the grid, we have a power factor correction stage to generate a DC voltage, but of course on this and DC voltage we are going to have always a ripple superposed to the DC level. So with the audio susceptibility transfer function we can know how this ripple is going to be transferred to the output of the converter and be superposed to the DC level of the output voltage. Also, with the audio susceptibility transfer function, we can know how the output voltage is going to behave if we apply a step up or a step down voltage at the input. So, the audio susceptibility transfer function is a very important characteristic of our DC-DC converter. Let's see then how to theoretically calculate the audio susceptibility transfer function of our converter. In this previous video, Power Electronics number 3, we have seen how to do an ultra-fast modeling of DC-DC converters. In this video, for the case of continuous conduction mode, which is the case that we are going to consider in this video. So, in the case of the back converter, in continuous conduction mode, we can obtain the average circuit in continuous conduction mode, as we have seen in this video. And from this, we can take perturbations and obtain the small signal circuit of the back converter in continuous conduction mode. And from this circuit, we can obtain the different characteristics of our converter, including the audio susceptibility transfer function. So, in order to obtain the audio susceptibility transfer function from the small signal circuit, we only have to consider that we are not going to have perturbations on the duty cycle. So, this current source here is an open circuit and this voltage source here is going to be a short circuit. So, by solving this circuit here, we can obtain the output voltage over the input voltage as shown by this equation which corresponds to the audio susceptibility transfer function. There are two relevant points. One is the audio susceptibility 
at very low frequencies or DC. So we have this value here because RL, the series resistance of the inductor, is usually small compared with the uh, load resistance. This value is approximately equal to the duty cycle of the converter for the case of the back converter. And the audio susceptibility at very high frequencies is going to be approximately equal to zero. So here we have a particular example as usual. This is the same back converter as in previous video. We have here in blue the different parameters of the converter. With this we can use WinPython to represent the body plot of the audio susceptibility transfer function. Here we have the different parameters. This is the transfer function. Here we are doing the plotting and here we are printing several points for comparison with the simulation results. And here we have the plotting of the magnitude and this is the phase of the transfer function. And finally, here we have several points corresponding to this transfer function. As usual, if you are not familiar with WinPython, you have these two videos to get more information about how to install WinPython and how to use it for plotting body diagrams. Now let's see how to obtain the audio susceptibility transfer function by simulation. So the first way is by using the actual circuit. As we have seen also in previous videos, we are using here the actual circuit with the switch, the diodes and the different elements. Now we are injecting the perturbation here in series with the input voltage by using this sinusoidal voltage here with an amplitude of one volt and a variable frequency. And then we have to obtain the perturbation here at the output. And by the ratio of these two perturbations, we can obtain the audio susceptibility transfer function. As we have seen many times in previous videos, we can do this by using these statements. We can extract the perturbations from the input and from the output and then calculate the gain of the transfer function, the magnitude, and then the phase. For more details about this, please take a look at this first video, LT Spice number 6, open loop frequency response of a DC-DC converter. Here we can obtain detailed information about how to use these statements to obtain the body plots. And as usual, these other elements here are from our Simulink compatible control library that is available from my website. And here are the results of the simulation of this actual circuit. So here in the solid line we can see the gain of the audio susceptibility transfer function. And here in the discontinuous line we have the phase of the transfer function. We have a point here and we can check that is very similar to the value obtained from the theoretical analysis. The second way is by using the average circuit. So here we have the average circuit of the back converter. In continuous conduction mode, we have this current source here, we have this other voltage source and the rest of the elements. We are using this voltage source in series to include the perturbation on the input voltage. Here we are using this other voltage source to generate the input that is going to be used in our statements here. And then from the output also we can obtain with these statements the perturbation and finally get the magnitude and the phase of the audio susceptibility transfer function. And here we have the results of the magnitude of the gain and the phase of the gain. The gain corresponds to the audio susceptibility transfer function. 
and this point here we have the values for this point as shown in this box and we can check that these values are very similar to those obtained from the theoretical analysis. And finally, the third way of obtaining the audio susceptibility transfer function is by using the small signal circuit. So again, we have here implemented our small signal circuit for the back converter. Here we have only small signals, we have only perturbations, so we are injecting the perturbation by using the AC parameter of the voltage source. And then we can measure directly here the voltage, which corresponds directly to the perturbation at the output. And with this, we can obtain the audio susceptibility transfer function directly by doing this type of analysis, a dot AC analysis of LT spice. And this is the results of the simulation of the small signal circuit. So here we are representing the output voltage over 1. 1 is because we are injecting 1 volt at the input as perturbation. So this is to better show that we are representing the audio susceptibility transfer function. And once again, we have in the solid line the magnitude of the audio susceptibility and in the discontinuous line we have the phase. And we can check that this representation is very similar to that obtained from the theoretical analysis and from the wind python plotting. Well, this concludes this presentation today. I hope that you find this video interesting. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.